everyone, welcome to this video session on mind mapping for accelerated learning. In this session we are going to talk about how a faculty or a teacher can use the concept of mind mapping for accelerated learning and teaching process for any subject. Uh, the concept of mind mapping was started by uh, Tony Buzan, uh, late 1960s and early 1970s. And the whole concept of mind mapping, it's about visualization of what's really happening in our brain with what's externally happening. So, in a nutshell, uh, mind mapping is a thinking tool which really reflects what happens out externally outside with what we think in our brain. So, it is like a whole brain thinking using our both right and left brain, both analytical part of it and the creative part of it. So, uh, with this concept, we are going to see today mind mapping of uh, for a very common subject in the computer science or school of computing sciences, which is called as data structures. Now, the use of mind mapping is it is used for accelerated learning. Accelerated learning means like we can just capture everything and put it in one one nutshell. Like the, this is one of the alternative teaching methodologies which any faculty can use in their respective classes. So let us go and see how. We can really do use this concept of mind mapping, and I'm going to take a basic subject called uh, data structures. So any mind map should start at the center of the page, right? And uh, for example, we have we have taken here uh, data structures. So this is going to be the uh, subject name. So the best part of mind mapping is whatever you do in mind mapping, it has to start in the right center of the mind map, center of the page. And anything you do in mind mapping should be related for visualizing and it has to have a relevant picture so that as soon as anyone sees the picture, they should relate the topic to the picture. So for data structures, we can give some picture as, oh, we can use something as any picture. So data is A, B, C, and then there is a structure up in there. So, something. Now, the, the whole the whole agenda of mind mapping is about association, associating certain things. So, we have a subject here, and each one, each subject has got minimum five units, if I'm not wrong. And let's let's just take one one of the units, right? So, it has to have branches and the branches should have sub-branches. For example, unit one in data structure talks about non-linear and in non-linear we have trees, we have graphs. And if you go to linear, we have stacks, we have queues and we have lists. So let us see how we can pictureize everything in a mind map and put it on the board. So, let's take one branch as Here, then this is as second branch. Now, for example, I'm taking the four units of my data structure. The first unit will be about linear and non-linear. And I'll also have sorting in data structure. So I'll go for sorting. All right. And I'll also go for algorithm analysis. Now each picture, each word should have an association with the picture. That's 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 what is mind mapping. You map the whole subject, and you also have pictures associated with it. So, for example, if it's a linear one, we give something called one, two, three. If it's non-linear, we give it randomly two, seven, nine, eleven, something. So in linear, again, if you see there are, you know, you can take up basic three things. You get here, you get that. I have three things. I have stack, I have queue, 
I have lists. So for each and everything, I, I need to have a picture. For example, Q, I can draw some people standing. Thank you. Lists, I can just put something. One, two, three. Stack, I can just put something. All right, so what we're doing is we are taking one unit linear and I have stacks, I have queues, I have lists. And if you take non-linear here, and again from here you can make it as sub-branch, you have here trees, you have trees here, you also have graphs. So, what is it we can draw a picture? Anything, tree, it just comes to your mind of And then you have graphs for you. And then you do graph and then some points. Alright, so this is about three, this is about graphs. So when you go for sorting, so we, we, we talk about sorting and there are two things again comes to our mind. One is internal. Internal, the other is external. Now, in internal, we know we have something called a bubble sort. In external, we know we have an bucket sort. So, if you put again here, one more here, if you just find a bubble sort, and just put some bubbles and bucket. Yes, and we draw it. Sort B U B L D. So sorting is two options. There are two kinds. Now we can just see about it: bubble sort and bucket sort. Now the whole whole agenda, whole agenda of mind mapping is right that you encapsulate everything in a nutshell here in one chart. It is easy for the student to recollect and to visualize the whole subject in one chart rather than just writing subject point by point by point. And if you just see this uh, algorithm analysis, we have this uh, complexity, we have ADT. If you go here, you have two things. You have ADT, you have complexity. And again, in complexity, we have two things on time, right, and then space. So for time, I can just draw some clock. Drawing the rocket. So, whatever is my syllabus of five minutes, what I can do is with my students, I can just give this assignment to my students and tell them that how they can just encapsulate the whole thing in one thing, in one page. So, the best advantage is the student will just visualize what is there, which unit, what is really happening, and by just seeing the pictures, they can just recollect. It's not by heart, but it's just for them to. Recollect, and that's why it's called as mind mapping for accelerated learning. And now let's go and see some other pictures where our faculty members have used it and how creative students have done their mind mapping with their respective subjects. Let's have a look at it. Hello, everyone. Now let's have a look at some of our students and our faculties who have really used this concept in their classrooms. We have some examples here, and uh, the first one. Uh, I, want, I want to show you about, uh, this is something called environmental studies and mostly it comes in the first semester and the second semester students. And uh, they did a beautiful mind map, as you can see here, called, it's called Mind Map of Environmental Studies and Natural Resources. So they have really used graphs and uh, they have just given all the units. One unit talks about population here, environmental population, and how it's going to impact. And other one talks about ecology and biodiversity. And they've put a picture of tiger here, right? And then comes human population and the environment. So they put population. And under that sub-branch, it's called about women and child health, 
it's about population exploration, family care, water resources, and here we have social issues and the environment. So we have rainwater harvesting, we have uh, green energy resources, we have Forest Day for Conservation Act. You know, uh, all this, whatever is done, if they just took the entire syllabus copy and made a mind map. They've mind mapped it so beautiful, and uh, it's given by location to all of 09 BME. It's the second year student, and it's submitted to Professor Sai Saraswati Ma'am. And uh, as you can see, it's so creative. So what student will do from this is they just learn how they can really help it out. We can also have one more example. Uh, this one, if you if we just see this. Uh, this, this topic talks about uh, solving global warming, you know, it's about global warming, the entire topic. Now, when you do a mind map, whatever is associated with global warming, whatever comes to your mind. So, the f first thing is about uh, home appliances, you know, the way we use our energy and uh, plant trees, we need to plant more trees. So, there's something here called plant more trees and then eat less meat, so there's a picture for meat, use less of plastic bags, can you see a plastic bag picture, uh, and then we need to be a catalyst, we need to have high energy audit, we need to emit less CO2, and use, you know, travel more, so if it's more of car, we should have fuel efficient and hybrid and electric cars, rather than the CO2 emission one, and uh, you see here, everywhere the topic global warming is being associated. And you see the central theme of the picture here? It's the earth which is crying. So it, every picture, whatever you do in mind map, should really connect to the topic. And there's just a brief idea in this video. Uh, we will be doing a lot of workshops in our forthcoming programs for faculties to really understand what is a mind map and how you can use it for learning and teaching methodology which will really accelerate the learning of our students. So together let's use some alternative teaching methods which are so innovative and students will love to do it because it's also called as a whole brain thinking methods. Thank you so much.